Welcome to Making Money. This is Matt McCall. Thanks for joining me. It is Tuesday, the 17th of January, 2023. We have a special show coming up for you tonight. We're going to jump into a specific sector that many people have been thinking about. It's a sector that could potentially help really save your portfolio in time of geopolitical um, messes going on around the world. That's the defense sector, aerospace and defense. We're gonna dive into that sector right now on Making Money. Last year when most investors were watching their stocks plummet, one Wall Street legend had an unfair advantage that was identifying winning stocks with massive upside. Like Riot Blockchain before it shot up 10,090%, Digital Turbine before it shot up 789%, Overstock.com before it shot up 1,050%. This power gauge comes from the legendary Mark Jacob. Right now, you can get a free in-depth look at how his power gauge system works. A way to type in any 4,000 different tickers and see exactly where the stock is most likely to go next and in any type of market. Simply go to PowerGagePreview.com for a free look. Again, that's PowerGagePreview.com. Again, thanks for joining me. This is Matt McCall. It's the 17th of January, 2023, a nice Tuesday down here in South Florida. So, as I mentioned in the open, uh, I'd like to talk about the aerospace defense sector. It's, it's, it's a sector that's often overlooked by a lot of investors um, for many different reasons. Uh, for starters, it's, it's not very sexy. You, know, you don't really um, get super excited talking about the next weapon that's coming out or the next bomber or the next missile. It's just it's, it's not really that sexy. And even though there's a lot of innovation going on in that sector, it's just not something that gets people overly excited. They'd rather talk about electric vehicles or flying cars or the next crazy artificial intelligence or virtual reality. A little bit more kind of connectivity to it, something you can kind of see and feel and kind of just understand a little bit more. Another aspect is the fact that um, usually if we're talking about aerospace defense, we're talking about war, uh, people dying. And again, that's just not a comfortable conversation that people like to have. You know, when I managed money for over 17 years, I had some clients I always had a questionnaire when we sat down. And, it, you know, if there's certain sectors or certain areas you do not feel comfortable investing in, it could be anything. Uh, a lot of times it was uh, tobacco or alcohol. And, you know, some people would put down their uh, defense stocks. They didn't want to invest in a company um, that was creating uh, weapons that could be used to kill people. Um, so yeah, th th there is that, that part of this aspect too, that it's not brought up as much, um, in the media. It's not brought up as much, uh, when you sit down with your financial advisor, if you have one, uh, because again, it, it tends to be one of those uncomfortable situations that the conversation just doesn't flow. Uh, cause it's not like, Hey, you know, Lockheed's killing it because we're selling it. They're selling a ton of missiles, uh, to blow up the Russians, it's still human beings. So it is a sector that's often overlooked for that. The unfortunate part is that we live in a world with rising geopolitical tensions, and that leads to more spending on aerospace and defense. And when I talk about spending, I'm not talking about a couple million here or there. I'm talking about billions and billions of dollars. And um, you know, to get a new fighter jet isn't cheap. To get the next big missile isn't cheap. To get the defense uh, missile defense system against that new missile is not cheap. And, you know, a lot of these companies obviously work directly with governments uh, and uh, have very large lucrative contracts, which uh, results in a really good business model, honestly. So th those are kind of the, the big picture things. And even though I, I, I believe and I hope that 2023 will be better uh, from the geopolitical landscape, uh, especially in Ukraine, Russia, uh, I hope things start to kind of simmer down a little bit and Putin finally takes a step back. I don't know if he will. But hopefully things get smoothed out there and uh, hopefully get close to some type of semblance of normalcy uh, in that region of the world. And that'd be, that'd be very good for all of us uh, around the world. Um, there's obviously tensions in the South China Sea that we need to keep an eye on. Uh, there's always tensions in the Middle East going on. Uh, you still have Syria. You have so many places around the world. Um, you know, Africa is often overlooked and all the, the little civil wars going on in all the separate countries down there. So. 
it's not going away, but hopefully we get to a point where we feel a bit safer, if you will. Um, you know, not that we don't feel safe now, but we get to a time where the geopolitical tensions drop to a more manageable level, uh, if you will. All that being said, because of what's going on, especially in Ukraine and Russia, we've seen a, a lot of uh, countries, U.S. included, uh, most EU countries, European Union countries, um, giving weapons to Ukraine to fight off Russia. And that has led to their stockpiles being, de being depleted. So what they must do then is buy more defense weapons to really restock their uh, uh, you know, their, their cache of weapons. And we're starting to see that. Uh, we'll talk about Japan here in a moment because Japan's in a very unique situation. It's one of the biggest drivers of aerospace defense spending in the next 10 years, in my opinion. We'll talk about that in a minute. But we'll take a look first real quick at, at, at this chart. And this is a chart looking at the um, uh, iShares U.S. Aerospace and Defense ETF, symbol ITA, versus the S&P, the Spiders, over the last 12 months. You can see ITA, which is a basket of uh, about 30 or so aerospace defense stocks, up about 6%, with the S&P down about 15.5%. So in that year, that was crazy, 2022, not many sectors did well. We know energy did well and a couple others, but aerospace defense was one of the areas you could actually hide out. And again, unfortunately, a lot of that has to do with the fact that we were in heightened um, geopolitical um, environment in, in the last year. And um, so we're going to see increased spending from the U.S., because we want to restock ours as well, because we've been giving a lot of weapons to Ukraine. You're going to see increased spending in the European Union restock as well. And, um, you know, there's 26 EU states, and this, this stat's not including Denmark. They spent $225 billion on defense in 2021. Uh, that was up 6% over 2020. Um, when the 2022 numbers come out, I, I can imagine they're going to be much higher. And I think they're going to continue to be higher for years going forward, because, again, they need to restock their cache of weapons. Um, The U.S. Uh, introduced a bill recently to increase the military budget by 8% in fiscal 2023, up to about $858 billion. Um, so, yeah, that's that's pretty big. And part of that, they talked about um, their, their critical munitions uh, production because, they believe it or not, we have a pretty big dependence on a lot of that stuff on China. So we're trying to get off uh, China, uh, the, the, the kind of the reliance that we have on China for some of these things. And if you didn't see, just recently, the U.S. Air Force debuted its first new stealth bomber uh, in 30 years. And, um, I mean, you think about that. That's a, that's a long time uh, to not have one. And um, it, it was revealed here in 2022. And it's called the B-21 Raider. Uh, we'll pull up an image of it here and show you it. It looks pretty badass, I'll say that. You know, again, I mean, you hope you don't have to have these things because you don't want to be bombing people and doing things. But it looks like a real badass uh, uh, Um, jet, if you will, or bomber, I guess, not jet, bomber. So the U.S. is spending money, the EU is spending money, and um, then there's Japan, folks. Japan's very interesting because uh, they've changed some of the laws recently that now allow Japan to invest in its military for really the first time since World War II. Um, it could defend itself, but it couldn't invest in really attacking other people. So the prime minister recently came out and they asked, he asked the cabinet, um, he wanted to have um, spending for military, uh, for defense. And he wanted to have the defense spending that equals 2% of GDP by fiscal year 2027. So that would be uh, about $287 billion over the next five years. And think about this, their defense budget um, right now for the current fiscal year is less than $40 billion dollars looking to increase that dramatically. So again, that's a lot. They were looking, talking hundreds of billions of dollars coming into the market that was not there. On top of the EU, again, restocking, the US restocking, China's not going anywhere. Russia's going to continue to spend money. So you're seeing really all regions of the world um, really take advantage of, of, of the situation and using that to increase their defense budgets and again, spending more money. One area that's come into concern because of the Ukraine-Russia situation is uh, nuclear missiles. And uh, three companies really kind of dominate that. That's Lockheed Martin, which is LMT, North of Grumman, NOC, the symbol, and then Raytheon, which symbols RTX. We'll talk about those stocks in a minute. But you know, even though nuclear warheads have been decreasing, they peaked in 1986 when they stood at over 70,000 
the current toll is around 12,700. Um, and as you can imagine, you know, when you look at that stockpile, US, Russia, China, all near the top of that. Um, the worldwide spend on nuclear bombs and missiles in 2020 was 72.64 billion. And uh, Research and Markets, which is a, a firm that does uh, uh, numbers, they believe that that number by 2023 will jump to 126.3 billion. It's a jump of 79%. So instead of going away from nukes, we're actually going more towards it. Uh, and again, US dominates it. China has been growing their market share, as you know, second largest economy in the world. Obviously, they want to flex their muscles as well. So they're doing a ton of spending on that uh, at the same time. Um, China was the second largest spender on nuclear weapons last year. U.S. was number one. Um, you know, U.S. and Russia, they have their stockpile still. China's trying to build theirs up uh, at the same time. And um, according to the U.S. budget, uh, the Congressional Budget Office report that came out a couple of years ago, the U.S. is going to spend up $50 billion on its nuclear forces through 2000, or sorry, 2028. So again, we're talking huge numbers here, folks. You add these all together, it's hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars uh, that is being spent. And um, take a look back. Uh, there's 15 new nuclear weapon contracts um, awarded in 2021. They're valued about $30 billion. Um, and you take a look at 2020, it's only $14.8 billion. So one up over 100% from 2020 to 2021. Uh, we're seeing uh, potentially even bigger, bigger numbers going in the future. And a lot of those systems are run by, again, two company, or one company I mentioned already, which is Lockheed Martin. They have the Trident. Uh, and then Boeing, uh, which is symbol BA, has a Minuteman three, which is another system uh, that that that's uh, nuclear related. So it's it's all the big names that you think about when, when it comes to that. Uh, I have so many more stats here; I don't need to really get into them. Um, but it's just it's it's pretty amazing of the the high numbers uh, that they have out there. You know, just for example, Lockheed Martin uh, has more than fifty global partners. Yeah, everything from the, the UK to Japan, Saudi Arabia. Um, you have North Grumman, they have 25 different nations uh, that they work with. Um, and then you have, you know, Raytheon, L3 Harris, which is another company, all major, major um, contracts and relationships with countries all around the world. And again, this goes back to, uh, you know, kind of starting with the Ukraine situation, just kind of fanning out from there. Um, the, uh, you know, the Javelin um, um, anti-tank missiles um, that we're giving over, we're giving to uh, Ukraine. It's made by Lockheed. So if you're looking at that, okay, the thing we keep doing it, then you want to look at Lockheed stock. The uh, air defense systems, the Stingers, uh, that's Raytheon, so that they make then. So you're going to see a lot of these major players really um, kind of <clears throat> all have their hands in every little aspect of defense. You know, Boeing is an interesting company, symbol BA, because, uh, you know, obviously, they're, you think of Boeing a lot of times, you think about you know, commercial airlines, and Boeing 787 and Boeing Dreamliner, yada, yada. Um, been around forever, uh, really, you know, not forever since commercial jets have been around. Um, but it's also a major player in the defense sector. Uh, they did uh, revenue uh, 2021 of 26.5 uh, billion in defense, and that's about 43% of overall revenue. So a large portion does come from defense. You know, they make the uh, B 52 bomber, uh, B for Boeing, obviously. They also make the jets like the uh, F 18, uh, the F 15. Uh, they have updates coming from that. Um, they make the uh, T-7 Red Hawk trainer jets, uh, the Stingray drones, uh, the K K C-46 uh, tanker that they use for the Air Force and Navy. They do a lot of stuff. And they're actually building the, the crew space transportation 100. It's a Starliner. And that's going to take astronauts uh, back and forth um, uh, to uh, space. And um, so, yeah, you're, you're seeing uh, the company like that that's very, very diverse. I like Boeing because, again, I like the defense spending aspect of it, but also 57% comes from more of the commercial airlines. And I'm, I'm hopping on a, uh, a flight here after I record this, and as I'm always on planes, and they're full. You know, people are continuing to upgrade and buy new airlines. So this is uh, an, a stock that I do like. So let's take a look at the chart. And it's had a hell of a run since October, from, from 120 up to 207 now. Uh, it's had a nice start to the year, a great start to the year. And if we take a look at a longer-term chart of Boeing, it's really kind of been in a downtrend for a couple of years uh, after peaking in 2018 above $440 a share. So to get back to even where we were, it has some more than double from this level. I still think there's a lot of huge upside. This is, you know, obviously some issues with the commercial jets back then. Uh, and then we also had uh, a little thing that we know as uh, uh, the pandemic. So Boeing as an airliner, again, commercial jets, 
issue there was the fact people stopped flying, came down and then started working its way back up. But still, we got a long ways to go uh, for Boeing. So that's that's one I, I definitely would like to keep your eye on. Uh, another one's Raytheon. Uh, the similar to Raytheon is RTX. And uh, Raytheon Technology Corporation is a full name of it. Um, uh, their missile and defense segment reported about 15.5 billion in sales, which is about a quarter of all of Raytheon sales last year. And that's just in uh, the missile and defense segment. Um, but, you know, they do some commercial aviation as well. Uh, not as much as Boeing, but they do some as well. But missiles are really where you're, you're see, seeing Raytheon come through. And, and you know, they, they deal with a lot of uh, countries that are near countries that are, quote unquote, bad. Russia, China, North Korea, Iran, countries around there need these anti-missile uh, systems. Um, they make that Stinger anti-aircraft that I talked about earlier. Uh, and with Lockheed, uh, they make the Javelin anti-missile. They work with Lockheed for that, both being used uh, in Ukraine war right now. They also do the primary these from the uh, the Iraq war, the Tomahawk and the Patriot missiles, make those as well. Uh, they have deal with uh, hypersonic weapons, uh, cyber war as well. Raytheon's pretty interesting. Take a look at this chart. Um, pretty similar. You know, it's had a hell of a run here since October. But if you zoom out, a little different than Boeing. Even though it got hit here in 2020, as you can see, it's bounced back up because it doesn't have as much exposure to commercial. Uh, and that's why you're seeing that holding up a little bit better. Um, so another one we take a look at, and you may not have heard of this one. It's, it's not as big and not as well known spinoff as of the last few years. Um, this is a company called uh, Howmet, H-O-W-M-E-T, Aerospace. H-W-M is the uh, uh, ticker symbol. It's about $5 billion in sales in 2021 uh, based out of Pittsburgh. And this is a little different because it does a lot of supplies for bigger companies. So it supplies uh, for like the F-35 um, uh, stealth fighter um, and, you know, that, the Lockheed fighter that does um, some titanium and forged aluminum for for bulkheads, uh, for uh, for planes. Um, so more of a of a kind of a supplier, if you will, to a lot of these large companies. Uh, but, you know, they do work with Boeing. They work with uh, Lockheed. They work with both the commercial side and the defense side as well. And um, again, we'll take a look at this chart. And this is a very nice chart. This is broken out to a new high. And uh, if we scan out this, this company, you know, it's, it's new all-time high going all the way back to 2014. Uh, we just recently broke to a new all-time high. And that's, that's, that's really impressive. So there's a lot of companies out there you may not think about. You think about the Lockheeds, the Boeings, the, the Raytheons and stuff. But there's a couple others that you really don't really want to want to overlook. Let me take a look at one more here. Again, one that's maybe not necessarily as common um, out there. And this is a Textron, so a TXT. Uh, they're a maker of Bell helicopters. You've probably heard of those. Uh, Cessna business jets did about uh, 12 and a half billion sales in 2021. Um, but they also work with the Army because they, they use uh, their jets uh, for that. Um, and uh, they, they uh, have a, um, a deal with the U.S. Army uh, that's up worth of uh, $1.3 billion to make a aircraft uh, that's going to replace the Black Hawk helicopter, which has been in, in you know, big uh piece of machinery for the U.S. Uh, armed Forces for a very long time. Um, and they believe that just in the next 18 months, it's worth $232 million, but up to $1.3 billion. Uh, but of course, uh, Lockheed, uh, who makes uh, the Blackhawk, is fighting this, saying that uh, that they're protesting and it was not done right. Boeing's also protesting it. Uh, but again, this is a, a, a smaller company that, that does have its uh, hands in, in some military stuff. And you can see in the chart here, TXT, Similar to a lot of the ones we looked at, rallied based in October. We scan out a little bit, not far from all time highs. Um, but again, you know, when it comes to aerospace defense, these probably aren't the stocks that are going to make you ultra, ultra wealthy, but they'll maybe help you sleep at night. They have definitely helped you diversify your portfolio. And, and again, if, if we continue to see a rise in geopolitical tensions, which I hope we do not, uh, these types of stocks will do well. Even without that, because of the restocking that's going on. The fact that Japan is starting to spend money on, the, on aerospace defense for the first time in decades. There's a lot of uh, uh, trend uh, uh, winds behind this. Um, you know, so uh, these tailwinds are really going to push this forward. And I think there's some great opportunity here uh, to do this. And again, I wouldn't buy one stock. I'd look to buy a basket. So if you like that, say maybe you say, and I'm just nothing here, a buyer sell recommendation, just throwing numbers, names that I know. Raytheon, Boeing, Lockheed, Textron, throw them in a basket. You're putting four grand into this sector, but a thousand each. Don't put it all your eggs in one basket. You can see what can happen to something like a Boeing 
when they had some issues years ago with, uh, with their new airliners. So you, we really want to diversify. But I do think this is an area that's often overlooked, shouldn't be overlooked. Uh, there is innovation here. Um, and uh, again, it may not be kosher to talk about, but I think it's something that you don't want to overlook. And again, if you want to add some stability, some safety to your portfolio, I think you must take a look at the defense stocks. All right, folks, thank you so much for joining me. Hope you enjoyed the show. That was Making Money, and I'm Matt McCall. Opinions expressed on this program are solely those of the contributor and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of Stansbury Research, its parent company, or affiliates.